Ever feel like, you know, life's just throwing these curveballs at you faster than you can even swing? Yeah, yeah. Well, today's deep dive, this one's for you. We're diving into this stoic concept. It's called the dichotomy of control. Yeah, it's like a mental toolkit. You can use it to separate what you can actually control versus, you know, what you can't. Mm -hmm. And then you use that knowledge to kind of navigate like all the ups and downs of life. You can find more resilience, maybe even some peace. So it's about kind of taking charge of your inner game so you can play a better outer game. Exactly. Yeah. I like it. But let's let's break it down a little bit. Dichotomy of control. That's that's a mouthful. Yeah. What's like the core idea here? Well, at the heart of it, it's about recognizing you know, we only have so much we can actually control, right? right? Like one of your sources summed it up really well. Actually, it's a quote from Epictetus. He said, um, some things are in our control and others not. Things in our control are opinion, pursuit, desire, aversion, and in a word, whatever are our own actions. Things not in our control are body, property, reputation, command, and in one word, whatever are not our own actions. So it's like, I can control, say, my reaction to getting caught in the rain, but I can't control the weather itself. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Seems pretty simple, right? Right. <laughs> but so often we're wasting all this time, all this energy, stressing about stuff that we have zero power over. It's true. The Stoics, they were onto something here. It's about more than just acknowledging what we can and can't control though. Mm. The Stoics believed this division, this dichotomy, it helps us understand that real freedom comes from focusing on what we can influence, you know, which is mostly our own thoughts and our own action. Because let's be honest, getting all worked up about traffic or what other people think or like things that have already happened, it doesn't actually change anything. If anything, it just kind of makes us miserable. Totally. You get it. And, you know, the research even backs this up. There was this study during Stoic Week 2022. Oh. What they found was there was a really strong correlation between the, the people who, you know, actively practiced the dichotomy of control and an increase in their overall well-being. Interesting. Yeah, they said they were less stressed. They felt more resilient. Some of them even said they felt like they could focus better. Wow. So there's like actual science behind this ancient wisdom. Yeah. That's <sighs> fascinating. Okay, I'm definitely starting to see the appeal here, but how do you actually put this into practice? Got any good like real life examples? Oh, absolutely. Let's um, let's look at some of the case studies you found. Like take Megan, for example. Okay. So she's about to go into this big job interview. Oh yeah, nerve wracking. And she is like a nervous wreck, right? Totally. But instead of letting those nerves get the best of her, she uses the dichotomy of control to kind of regain her focus. So instead of like worrying about whether she'd get the job or not, which she can't control. Right. She channeled all that energy into what she could control. Like, did she ace the interview prep? Oh, she did. Nice. Yeah, she went in prepared, confident. She was ready to do her best. Yeah. And guess what? What? She got the job. No way. Yeah. It's a great example of how focusing on what you can control can lead to real world success. That's amazing. It's like that saying, control the controllables. Okay, but what about a situation where things are totally out of your hands? Like what happens when life throws one of those curve balls and you just, you never even saw it coming? Hmm. Well, that's where, uh, that's where we meet Walter. All right, Walter. So he found himself in a pretty, pretty unpleasant situation. Okay. He got spat on by a drunk guy. Oh, that's awful. What did he do? Now, I think it's pretty natural in that situation to get angry. Oh, yeah. Maybe even lash out. For sure. But Walter, he takes a deep breath and he remembers his stoic training. He recognized that, you know what? He can't control that other guy's actions. Right. But he could control his own reaction. Wow. Yeah. So he chose to not let this one lousy incident ruin his day. Exactly. Talk about turning the other cheek. <laughs> Okay, this is fascinating, but I have to imagine that this whole like mental shift, it's got to be easier said than done, right? For sure. Our minds don't always cooperate. You're absolutely right. It's like building any new habit, yeah. you know? It takes time, it takes practice, but the payoff though is huge. Mm -hmm. You're going to be calmer, more resilient, and that's, that's what we're going to dig into next. It's kind of like this. Your mind, it's a muscle. Okay. And the dichotomy of control, that's like a new exercise. It takes right. time to build up that mental strength, you know? So so how do we start training this, like, mental muscle? Where do we even begin? Well, it all starts with awareness. Right. right. You got to be paying attention to what triggers your stress, those negative emotions that come up. So, like, noticing when I'm, 
I don't know, totally spiraling about a deadline or like obsessing over some random comment someone left on social media. Exactly. Yeah. In those moments, you got to hit the pause button. Yeah. Ask yourself, is this actually something I can control? Okay. And if the answer is no, it's time to practice letting go. Okay. That makes sense. But letting go, it's, uh, it's easier said than done, right? Oh yeah. Sometimes it's like those thoughts, they just keep swirling around in my head, you know? Yeah, you're right. It's not always easy, but think about it this way. Holding on to those uncontrollable things. Mm -hmm. It's like you're holding on to a hot coal. It's just going to burn you. Uh -huh. The Stoics, they understood that a lot of our suffering, it comes from, from misclassifying control, from clinging to things we have absolutely no power over. Hmm. And could that be why we sometimes struggle with things like, like anxiety? or frustration. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like take anxiety, for example, when we're worrying about the future, things that may or may not even happen, you know, mm -hmm. that's a classic example of us, like trying to control the uncontrollable. Right. Right. And what about when we're like stuck in the past, you know, replaying all our mistakes or, or dwelling on what we should have done differently. I feel like that's got to mess with your sense of control too. It does. That's yeah. often where we see depression take root, you know, hmm. it's that Oops. feeling of being powerless because yeah. we can't change what's already happened. Right. Like we're trying to control a time machine that doesn't exist. Exactly. And then there's, there's social anxiety. Oh boy, do I know that one? It's like, I'm constantly trying to control how other people perceive me, which let's be honest is it's impossible and exhausting. Yes. Social anxiety. It often stems from this misconception yeah. that like that we can control other people's thoughts. Yeah. Like we can control their opinions of us. Like we're trying to be like, pop exactly. And, yeah. and speaking of stress, you know, anger, frustration, they often come from that same desire to control things or, or even people, things that are totally outside of our sphere of influence. Oh, a hundred percent. It's like, the more we try to force things to go our way, yep. the more frustrated we become. You got it. But when we can actually recognize what's truly within our control, our own responses, our own choices, that's when we can break free from that frustrating cycle. So we've talked about like identifying the things we can't control and like making peace with them. Yeah. But how do we actually shift our focus to those things we can control? That's where those real life examples are really helpful. You know, remember Shane? I know, yeah. He was dealing with anxiety after being bullied. It would have been so easy to get stuck in that cycle of rumination, right? Blaming himself, blaming others for what happened. Yeah. Those thought patterns can be so hard to break. But Shane, he found a way out. What was his like secret weapon? Shane learned to really observe his thoughts and, you know, to identify which ones were outside of his control. So instead of just constantly dwelling on the past, he focused on what he could control in the present moment, his own resilience. He actively chose to focus on building his inner strength. That's so powerful. Instead of being like a victim of his circumstances, he found a way to become the hero of his own story. Exactly. And that's the beauty of the dichotomy of control. You see, it's not about becoming passive. It's about choosing where you direct your energy. Remember Jay, yeah. who turned his whole life around in prison. Right, right. He couldn't change the past, the things that landed him there, but he could control his present choices, his actions. He chose to focus on personal growth, on helping others. Those are some seriously inspiring examples. They really highlight how we can actually use this ancient stoic wisdom and like actually navigate even the toughest challenges that life throws our way. But I got to imagine for those of us who are just starting out, it can feel kind of overwhelming, right? Yeah. For like, right. where do I even begin? Well, the good news is you don't have to tackle everything at once. You know, one of your sources had a great suggestion for a starting point. Pick just one thing. Okay. One thing that you're really stressed about right now. And just consciously try to apply the dichotomy of control to it. Okay. I can do that. It's about taking those small steps, right? Building that mental muscle one rep at a time. So like, say I'm stressing about this big presentation I have coming up. Okay. What would I do? Well, ask yourself what aspects of this presentation are actually within my control. All right. Let's see. I can control how well I prepare, obviously, hmm. how much I practice and even like, you know, the design of my presentation slides. Exactly. You see, by focusing your energy on those elements, you're shifting your attention away from the outcome, which you can't entirely control and towards the process, which you absolutely can influence. That is such a good point. So it's about like focusing on what you can do now instead of worrying about what might happen later. 
Exactly. It's about making peace with that uncertainty mm -hmm. and then, you know, choosing to act with intention, even when things feel totally chaotic around you. This whole idea of focusing on the process, not the outcome, that's huge. It's like reframing your definition of success. Right? Absolutely. It's about aligning your actions with your values, even when things don't go exactly according to plan. Makes sense. The Stoics believed that true freedom wasn't about having control over everything in the external world, but about mastering our inner world, our thoughts, our reactions, and our choices. So it's less about trying to bend the world to our will and more about finding a sense of peace and acceptance within ourselves, regardless of what's happening around us. Precisely. Right. It's about recognizing that we always have a choice in how we respond to life's challenges. Okay. And by focusing on what we can control, we actually gain more influence over our own happiness and well-being. That's a really empowering thought. So for our listeners who are ready to embrace the dichotomy of control, what's one final piece of advice you can leave them with? Remember, this is a journey, not a destination. Yeah. There will be times when you fall back into old habits, when you get swept away by emotions, or when you forget to ask yourself, is this within my control? Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. The key is to keep practicing, keep learning, and keep coming back to this powerful tool. It's like we're training our minds to be more resilient, more adaptable, and more at peace, even amidst the chaos of everyday life. Exactly. And the more you practice, the easier it becomes to find that sense of calm and clarity, no matter what life throws your way. This has been such an eye-opening deep dive. We've explored the what, the why, and the how of the dichotomy of control. And I think we can all agree that this ancient stoic wisdom is just as relevant today as it was centuries ago. It's a timeless reminder that true freedom comes from focusing on what we can control, our own thoughts, actions, and reactions. So to our listeners, as you go about your day, we challenge you to ask yourself, what one thing will you consciously choose to control today? How will you use this knowledge to create a calmer, more fulfilling life for yourself? Remember, the power is within you. Keep exploring, keep learning, and keep diving deep. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Made of granite, Roman kingpin, philosophy's mechanic. Marcus done talk in the ruins of the forum, so solid as marble mine, free like a quarrel. In the Colosseum, clap of reason echo, serenity within, like the flight of a sparrow. Virtue calm deep, it's a disciplined aura. Roman road stretch, meditating on the flora. King from the low, turn the chaos to order. Stoic guys calm through the wounds and the slaughter. The whispers from the valleys to borders Life's but a blade, seek the wisdom of warriors In the library stacks, rolled up scrolls of meditations Face the plague, wrath the nature, Roman tribulations Men clash swords, but the mind remains placid Stoic thoughts run deep in a world so rapid On the battlefield, courage rides with the centaur Meditate at dawn for the day's emperor Still meets flesh, Marcus keeps his composure World might burn, but his heart's granted bolder Turn the chaos to order So what dies calm through the wounds and the slaughter Heard the whispers from the valleys to borders Life's what a blade, seek the wisdom of warriors Do the best you can, take your best shot And let the chips fall where they may And so as you begin to look at people become afraid of success Because they feel they're not good enough, they can't handle it The responsibility is too big, I've been there and when you feel that way, you begin to unconsciously work against yourself to make sure that you don't get it. You begin to sabotage your own potential in a variety of ways through procrastinating, through not taking care of business, not giving reports on time, not spending your time wisely, squandering your time looking at a lot of idle television or spend all your time lamenting and complaining about how bad things are, using your energy negatively rather than positively, complaining rather than producing. That's what we do when we're afraid of really making it. And when you're afraid of the unknown, when you're afraid to take that leap, when you're afraid to venture out there, that's a real challenge. You're going to die. Excuse me? You're going to die. In case you didn't understand that, you can't get out of life alive. So I'm saying to you, you got six months to live. Live your life now. Live your dreams now. Start acting. Like this is your last day on the planet. See, if we decide that we don't need a pronouncement from some physician to say we have six months to a year to live in order to really begin to appreciate the beauty of life, in order to really to make some hard decisions in life. See, we have the power in our hand. Like those little boys, we have that kind of power, that kind of genius, that kind of fortune, that kind of wealth, that kind of happiness, that kind of sense of fulfillment in our hands. We have that. We have that. It's in our hands. It's on us. And nobody can make that decision for us. We can give it away. We can give it to the company store for $400 or $500 a week. Or we can exchange it for 
how people think about us, how they feel about us, and go through life and resign ourselves to be miserable as we go to our graves, looking good for everybody else except to ourselves. Or we can decide, hey, wait, this is the only life. Adversity introduces a man to himself. Never attribute to malice that which can be adequately explained by stupidity. Let go of attachments and desires, and you will find peace. Buddha If you do not make yourself indispensable, you will be unemployed soon. You may not get the answer, so you just have to wing it. Why are you so busy with this or that? Stay with your soul, not with the body, Rumi. Remember that the insult does not come from the person who abuses you or hits you, but from your judgment that such people are insulting you. Therefore, whenever someone provokes you, be aware that it is your own opinion that provokes you. Try, therefore, in the first place, not to be carried away by your impressions, for if you can gain time and delay, you will more easily control yourself. They used to have. But you're stuck in this messy middle where you haven't yet worked out who you are on the other side of this. And that lonely chapter that's in the middle is something that I would say almost nobody that I've ever met who has gone from a place where they are to a place where they want to be hasn't gone through. You can't just go through life just showing up, eating, sleeping, and going to sleep. You're going to get depressed. Like your, your organism, the human organism, needs problem solving. It needs complex problems. It needs stress. It needs some sort of difficult thing that you have to overcome. And through that, you relax. You can't just have happiness all day. That you have to do those things. You have to suffer. You have to live in it. You have to be comfortable in it. It takes more effort to start in the beginning. And more people are right about the fact. They're like, hey, you're not going to hit it big. And guess what? A month in, you're not. But they're only measuring on months. And at six months, you're also not going to hit it big yet. And they're going to be like, I'm still fucking right. And at a year, you're still not going to hit it big. And they'll still be fucking right. And every day that you haven't hit it, they're going to feel like they were right. But they're wrong because they're measuring in days and you're measuring in decades. We need adversity, we need difficulty, we need struggle, mm -hmm. you, need, you need a weight to carry. And if you don't have any of this, you do not get your character tested, you do not advance yeah. in your own perception of who you are in this world and how you, how you engage with all the other people around. I want to see that guy who put in murder in hell and he thought about quitting and leaving and, and his wife and his kids and why am I here? Is it, is it worth it? All this crazy sh and still said and found out a way to get through it. So basically that's, that, that's the bottom line of it all. We all want to read about how we can quickly get somewhere. That's why the six minute abs and all sort of shit so powerful. Did, you may get some results from it, but they're not permanent. Remember, no amount of guilt can change the past and no amount of anxiety can change the future. Except that you will make mistakes and learn from them instead of dwelling on them. We can easily forgive a child who is afraid of the dark. The real tragedy of life is when men are afraid of the light. Plato Today is the oldest you've ever been in your life and the youngest you'll ever be again. Life doesn't get easier or more forgiving. We get stronger and more resilient. The greatest of all mistakes is to do nothing because you think you can only do a little. Zig Ziglar
forbear henceforth to complain of the trouble of a courtly life, either in public before others, or in private by thyself. Is there, and you're just going to live in it, versus embrace it, change it, improve it, make your mark upon it. What do you really, really want from your life? If you had no limitations, if you had all the money and all the time and all the talents and all the abilities, if you could do or be or have anything, what would you really want in your life? You know, there comes a day, man. Everyone's going to have this day. There comes a day where being average, being mediocre, is just sickening to you. It's just sickening. It makes you want to throw up because you've seen people with far less talent than you. As you're growing up with them, their childhood buddies, whatever else, they didn't have what you had. Yet now they're fucking to become something that you haven't. There comes that day. It's either when you're young, you know, and, and it strikes you on the baseball field because you're sick of striking out. Or it's, it's when you get fired from your fifth job, you know, and your wife your kids are on your ass because you don't know how to support them anymore. There comes a fucking day where push comes to shove. Where being mediocre, being like average and shit just fucking burns, it sucks so much. You can't deal with it one more day and you get off your fucking ass and you create something that's always been there. It's always been inside of you trying to come out. But you've never wanted to unwrap it because it's too much fucking pain and commitment. You were scared you were going to fail. You were scared if you started you never finish it. You didn't want to tell anyone about it. You knew it was there. But you never wanted to embark on it. Get success, remind you of what you could have been. And then the fucking spark is born. Get success, remind you of what you could have been. And then the fucking spark is born. And no matter what happens, I'm never going to be in this boat again. And you get up and you go, even if it gets knocked down, you just keep going, keep going, you're a wild man. And life has never been so sweet. That can happen at an early age, it can happen at a later age. It's going to happen to somebody, every, you know, no matter what's going to happen to you. And when it does happen to you, think you're lucky start. Things won't happen in a certain way just because you want them to happen that way. Expect nothing and you will never get disappointed. Living in accordance with nature is the best way to live. Zeno of Sidium The founder of Stoicism emphasizes the importance of living in harmony with the natural order of the universe. This involves accepting what is beyond our control and focusing on what is within our power. Do not allow anyone to treat you badly just because you love them. Remember, you train people how to treat you, unconsciously or not. The way